Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. We are thrilled to have New York Times best-selling author Alexander McCall Smith. You may know him from the number one ladies detective agency and it's his new standalone novel. It's called My Italian Bulldozer. Alexander, welcome back to Anderson's in Naperville. Thank you very much indeed. Thank it's, you. Well, it's so great to have you here. And I'm going to tell you that the title of this book, as soon as I bought it from my Random House rep, I said, i got to read this. <laughs> I love the title, My Italian Bulldozer. Yes, yes. So I know it's, it's been out over a month here in the States, but yes. um, longer in the UK. Yes. Yeah. But um, what are you hearing from your readers? Because this is a standalone novel. Yes. And I know you've written many, many books. Yes. And so what are you hearing from your readers? And maybe some, some readers who are new to your work. Too. Well, I, I must say that I'm, I'm very pleased with the reaction of the readers to this book. Um, it's, uh, the, the title is it's such an extraordinary one. Uh, and the, the, the basic idea behind it is so utterly uh, ridiculous and extraordinary. Uh, yeah. But people are really enjoying it. Uh, I think that many of them uh, are very keen to read it because they're, they're fond of, uh, of Italy and Italian culture yeah. and indeed yeah. Italian food and Italian wine, all of which is in this, right. uh, let alone <laughs> Italian bulldozers. Um, most people are, are not particularly fond of bulldozers, yeah. but they, they do quite like so many other aspects of Italian culture. Yeah. So, so where did the, the seeds start to grow for this story? Because well, you're, you're adding Tuscany, Italy, you know, Italy and, and a bulldozer mm. and love and all this sort of thing. Well, I, I've always been very keen on, on Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm a real Italophile. I, I love the country. I, I go there quite regularly. I studied years ago uh, in Siena uh, for a while. And uh, I enjoyed, enjoyed that very yeah, much indeed. That beautiful. was my first real experience of, yeah, of Italy, right. and I've kept the connection with the country going since then. Right. And of course, it's the most yeah. beguiling country. Right. Oh, it is. You, yeah. you can't help but fall in love with Italy. If you go to Italy, yeah. you're going to fall in love with it. Yeah, yeah. So, Paul Stewart, your, yes. your, your, your main protagonist here, he's Scottish. He's a mm. well known food writer. Yes. Um, and where does his DNA come from? Because this journey he takes on in many different ways yes. is so fascinating. So, so where did Paul come from? Well, I, I think I, I, I needed to have a central protagonist, somebody who has this experience of, right. uh, of, of Italy, this particular experience yeah. of Italy. And so he, he, he comes, he, he was convenient. And I, I had to think of a, uh, the sort of person who would go to Italy, who would be interested in Italian uh, cuisine and in, uh, in Italian wines, and who better than than a food writer, food writer too. Yeah. Right, so, right. so that's where he comes from. Yeah. And I loved his editor, Gloria. She's and very we, nice. we're not going to say too much about yeah, her because no, she's we don't, no spoilers here. She's great. She's <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah. So do you have an editor like Gloria? <laughs> <laughs> well, people always say that there's, 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 a, there's a considerable autobiographical element oh, in any novel. Okay, sure, uh, sure. So uh, uh, I do, uh, I've got some very good editors. I don't know whether I've got anybody exactly like Gloria. Probably yeah. not. Yeah, right. But I, you know, so Paul's had a bad breakup. Yeah. yeah a girlfriend who yes. has left him for a personal trainer. Personal trainer. Yeah. Yes, no, I, I wanted to, uh, her to leave him for, for, for somebody who would, would really seem very uh, inappropriate in, in a sense. Yeah. And so I, I'm sure that there are many meritorious and excellent personal trainers around, but this, this particular one is a, is, a little bit, uh, is a little bit physical. Yeah. And so he feels a bit, uh, he feels a little bit bereft. Right, right. But um, he meets, um, so his, his, his editor, Gloria, suggests mm. that he should go research the book yes. he's working on yes. by going to Italy. And, yes. And, but he meets someone interesting on the plane, um, Sylvia, yep. Ro Sylvia, Silvio Rossi. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, you see, I, I find that the, the Italians are very friendly and helpful people. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're wonderfully, wonderfully friendly people. Mm -hmm. The Italians make 
some of the finest friends in the world. They're very loyal friends. They're very warm. Yeah. It's such a lovely, warm culture. Uh, they enjoy conversation. So if you engage in conversation on a plane with uh, with an Italian, uh, it, it'll be it'll be highly entertaining. And of course, this particular Italian, this person he talks to on the plane, um, helps him when he needs help late, later on. Yeah, yeah. Comes to his his, his rescue there, right, right. which is very good. And I love that he's an economic historian. Yes, right? yes, <laughs> yes. Well, he has to do something. <laughs> to do something. No, but I love that. But um, so they're flying from Edinburgh to Pisa. Yes, I guess, right. So, um, but I love the book though, and the fact that you have created a character that's really a bulldozer. <laughs> yes. Well, the bulldozer, the bulldozer yeah. does play an important part yeah, uh, right, in it. Right. The bulldozer is is central, and uh, of course, it's it it comes into the plot in a rather surprising way. But yeah. it, it is, and it's 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 a very nice bulldozer. Yeah. And indeed, the cover shows this rather attractive I yellow know. bulldozer. It's rather nice. Yeah, I love <laughs> the cover art for this book. But did you did you re do any research on bulldozers or even drive one? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I, I was I, wondering about that. I know yeah. nothing about bulldozers. Yeah. I've never driven one. Yeah. But you know, and, and again, without giving the, the, the story away on this one, but it, it's one of those wonderful stories where when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And, yes, and, and, yes. And so he's been, and we won't give it away because it's, it's the discovery of what, what happens to him when he yeah, discovers yeah. he has to drive a, a bulldozer is so great. But um, I, I just love that story in here about there's there's sort of a metaphor or two different journeys going on here. Yes, there are. You know, the, the physical journey of, yes. of going through the Italian countryside. Yes, yes. And also, but then the journey, what he's going through. Yes, To mend yes. a broken heart. You know. Yes, indeed. Uh, I did want to write quite a bit about the about Montalcino, where it's set, right. uh, because that's that's a beautiful, beautiful um, little town in, in Italy, which yeah. produces a very famous wine, Brunello di Montalcino. So I wanted to say something about that. Yeah. So uh, in, in a sense, the Italian countryside and the Italian, the Italian town and the people, they're all very much part of this novel. Right. We've got Paul Stewart and his friends in the middle of it in the yeah. bulldozer, but the Italian surroundings are very important. So, so the Italian characters are just wonderful in this book. Is there one that you especially loved writing? Well, I, I think I liked I, li I liked all, all of them. I, I liked the, the the friend that he makes in in Montalcino. I think that's that's an engaging friendship. I liked the the man who owns the wine estate. Um, all of them all of them have their, their their merits. All of them seem a little bit larger than life, but yeah. Italy is is larger than life. Yeah. I mean, it really is. I think you're it's right. a very ex extraordinary place. It really <laughs> is. But you know, it doesn't matter. When you write, you've read, you've written books with characters from many different places, mm. whether it's Botswana or Africa or mm. Scotland mm -hmm. and Edinburgh or wherever it is, you you really capture the essence of people. And well, that's very kind but, of you to say that. No, and it really does. And you 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 so love these characters because you can tell that you do too, and you you, yeah. you write about them with such affection and respect. Yes. You never. But you put humor in there, but you're never disrespectful. Let's put it that way. Yes, I. How I, do you do that? <laughs> well, I, 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 I think that one, I think that there's a, b being a novelist uh, has certain sort of moral implications, uh -huh. and I think that one one's aware of the fact that one's creating lives mm -hmm. and portraying lives, and I, I feel a certain responsibility to the characters uh, I, I create. Uh -huh. So I, I wouldn't want anything really unpleasant to happen to them, sure, um, sure. because I think that uh, people people relate to fictional characters mm -hmm. as if they were real. Oh. Uh, and if we, if we read something which is very moving, the tears that we shed are real. So th this is, we know that it's not, it's not real ultimately, right. but uh, th there's, there's, uh, th there are moral implications to it. So I, I tend not to write about villains. I don't do villains particularly well. Yeah, I don't right. really have any really nasty characters. Yeah. In, in my books. Uh -huh. it, one obviously has to have those in literature. Sure, literature sure. is a broad church and it must include all sorts of people in it. Right. But I, t I tend to write at the positive end of the spectrum. Right, and I don't think you need a villain in a good piece of fiction to build that empathy in, in, in any reader. Mm. So, yeah. No, I, I prefer yeah. writing about yeah. ordinary people. Yeah. I, I sometimes write about people who are a little bit lost and a little yeah. bit lonely. Right. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I much prefer life as, as we see it, as we know it is, yeah. rather than a rather spiced up life. Yeah. And 
I love your descriptions of rural Italy, and it wasn't mm -hmm. only the look and everything, but it was the taste and the smell. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. it was fabulous. Yeah. Oh, well, it is. <laughs> it's uh, it's Italy's so such yeah. uh, r really impresses the senses so much. Yeah. So beautiful, and yeah. the Tuscan landscape can be just absolutely exquisite. You feel that you've 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 fallen into a Renaissance painting yeah. when you when you're there. Yeah, and I think. You know, a bulldozer in its nature yes. does not go fast, right? No. <laughs> no. But so I think his his journey yep. through the rural countryside is that journey to take it slow, slow yes. down, yes. be present, yes. and observe, and yes. taste everything, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. No, the, the bulldozer is the ideal vehicle for this book. <laughs> <laughs> He's so perfect. I think it wants. It makes everybody want to want to drive a bulldozer. Yes. Well, <laughs> a number number of people who've reviewed it have said, I, I really feel that I want to go through Italy on a bulldozer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that may be the new the new vehicle you go when you go to the car rental agency well, well, and you get that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so without spoilers, you know, mm. what can what can Paul show us um, about love and life? You know, besides wanting to drive a bulldozer. <laughs> well, I, I, I suppose he's he's looking for something, and I, I think that he's been uh, he's been in a, a not very satisfactory relationship yeah. um, with somebody who's left him for her personal trainer, yeah. Yeah. and so he he feels he feels a little bit a little bit blue about that, and I th I think that probably he 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 reflects while he's in Italy, he reflects on what we should be looking for. Uh, when we're 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 wanting a, a satisfactory relationship, mm -hmm. and indeed I think the the message ultimately, insofar as there is, is a message in this mm -hmm. in this book, is not only a message about taking life slowly and right. and enjoying and savouring it, but also realizing that the, the 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 people who can really give you something important emotionally may be right there, and you may not have really realized that they're with you all the time. That that somebody you already know. This idea that you have to go off and meet somebody exotic or somebody new right. um, may not be the may not be the real answer, and the real answer may be that there's somebody who's been a friend or has been close yeah. to you who actually is a person you really need in yeah. your life. Right. So that's that's a subsidiary yeah. right. subsidiary yeah. issue in the book, yeah. and that's a wonderful part of the book. But no spoilers. Well, but we don't let's not We're spoil not that. No. Say it. <laughs> no, no. So you have published, and I, I don't know how many, but it's, has, it's over 100 books. Yes. And you started with a children's book mm. in 1980. Yes, that's right. Called The White Hippo. That's it, yes. That's right. Yes, I, I, I wrote about 35 children's books before mm -hmm. I started to yeah. write um, books for adults. And then yeah. I've written more adults' books than yeah. I've written children's books. Yeah. I still write children's books. I write a couple of children's books yeah. a, year, a year, which I enjoy. I started a new series called The Deb Mori Series right, right. about uh, kids who go off on a on a, a school ship which sails around and they have all their classes yeah. in the school ship and on. on. And I, I enjoy doing yeah. that very much indeed. That's yeah. that's a series I'm yeah. currently no, working great, on, on the third series. third volume in that. Yeah. But then, when the when you wrote the first book in the number one ladies detective yeah. agency, and now there's going to be an 18th book. Uh, yes, I'm I'm writing the 18th at 18th the moment. 18th book yes. in that series. Yes. It is. There's over 20 million in print, just in English. I, it's got to be. It's I'm, a staggering amount. Yeah. It's a staggering amount. But um, but I think that because I know you were you taught law, yes. medical law, yes, at mm -hmm. universities abroad yep. and also yep. in yep. the UK. But um, when did you? make writing your, your full-time day job, well, let's that, put it that way. That, that, that happened after the publication, a few years after the publication of the Number One Ladies Detective Agency. Right. Uh, the Number One Ladies Detective Agency had been published initially in, in, in the UK, right. and uh, it, we had good reviews, but it, nothing particular happened. But it was only after the books had been published in the United States that they really took off. Right. Uh, which is the reverse of what one normally expects, where yeah. you start off in your own country and then sure. the books ta take off right. elsewhere. Right. But in my case, it happened in the U.S. first, which I'm very grateful to my uh, American readers for that. Um, so after that happened, I had to decide whether I was going to continue to be a professor of law, which was what I was, right. writing in my spare time. Sure. I, I took a, a, a leave of absence from the from the university, I took a, what I thought would be a three-year leave of absence, but in fact, really, I found that I was so uh, caught up in this 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 All new right. yeah. uh, new enterprise uh, that I, I I felt I should resign from the university, which I did, and I started the the new career, which is that of a full-time writer. Right. And I I miss I miss the aspects of my previous career. Sure, I miss sure. the contact with the students. Yeah. I enjoyed that very much. 
Um, but of course, there are there are other things which uh, which I, I can now do, which I I, I couldn't do when I was being uh, in that right. in but, the but university being, job. But being a professor of law, yeah. and and doing that for a number of years, how did that inform your life as a writer? Well, I don't know if it had too much of, a, okay. uh, of an effect, okay. other yeah. than I suppose I would say that law is a, is a fairly intellectually precise discipline, and of course you have to be able to express a situation in 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 law. Right. You have to express situations in a reasonably concise fashion, and and uh, so that that sort of training probably helped me in in a way. But I think that the the main um, inspiration and the main training for for being a writer mm -hmm. came from reading, which I think is where yeah, most sure. most writers yeah. get it. That's right. No good writer is is isn't worth their salt unless they read a lot. Yes. So, yeah. So um, talking about you have written so many different genres, mm. from children's books to nonfiction to yeah. you know many series, and is there a particular genre that you really enjoy, or is it is it is it just whatever story it is you want to tell? Well, I, I, I particularly enjoy fiction. I, I love writing okay. fiction. Yeah. And so uh, I write, I like writing novels, I think. Um, and uh, within that, uh, I suppose I, I like writing about human emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that gives me great pleasure. I did a book called Chance Developments, which is about, about that. Um, and so I wrote Trains and Lovers as well, which was also oh, dealing yeah. with. So I, I, li I like writing about love yeah. in, in people's lives and friendship. Right. Friendship actually is probably one of my favorite themes. And a lot of my books are about friendship. Yeah. When, you, when you really boil them down, I'm talking about friendship, which is such an important thing in our yeah. lives. Right. And sometimes we don't really perhaps pay enough attention to the cultivation of friendships and keeping friendships going. But friendships really are very important. Yeah. Well, and I loved your Emma, your reworking of, of the Jane Austen Emma. Well, yes, yeah. that, that I enjoyed very much yeah, indeed. Yeah, that was, I wish you would do another one. So do, <laughs> do another classic like that. I thought, that, I really that, love that. I, 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 yeah. I had yeah. great pleasure in, in, yeah. in writing that. Because yeah. Jane Austen, of course, one doesn't need, nobody needs to rewrite Jane Austen, but it was rather fun to, yeah, to write an Emma right. in, the, in the totally modern and surroundings. And there's great friendships in that book. And friendships, yes. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. So you were born in southern mm. Rhodesia, which yes. is now Zimbabwe. Yes. Um, Did your childhood um, help inspire some of your books and your, and your later well, characters? Well, I think, I think it probably did. I, I had this obviously rather unusual childhood living in the middle of Africa there, but uh, I think that it meant uh, that I had a feeling for, for, for Africa, for, for that part of Africa. And uh, I don't think that I would necessarily have been able to write the Botswana books with, without that. Right, I think right. that that was an important sure, um, sure. background uh, for me. And uh, so, so that, that, did, that did help. And, and that part of the world is, is, a, is a quite dramatic, very beautiful, mm -hmm. dramatic part of the world, right. and a very spiritual part of the world. Um, it, 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 it engages people spiritually. And, and I think that that probably has had some effect yeah, on my yeah. view of the world. Sure. So were you, were you happy with the HBO series? And I know they only did seven episodes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yes. it very much. I but think. Yeah. I think they did a very good job. Yeah. Anthony Mangala made the main film, the feature film that kicked it off, and then they did right. six yeah. in the uh, in in the series. Um, it it I thought they did they did it very well. Jill Scott, who played Mara Montsui, was very good. Anna Kanani Rose played Mama Kutsi. Mm -hmm. Both of those. Ladies were were really oh, terrific actors, actors, and they and they did it they did it very very well. Uh, the problem was, I suppose, um, there were it, it it was it encountered a couple of problems. One of which was that Anthony Mangella, the director, died, oh. uh, which was uh, a very sad uh, development indeed, because he was a very great great director, mm -hmm. and he directed the first film, and so uh, the series lost its 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 main voice. Uh, right at the beginning, before they made the made the uh, the individual episodes, that was very very sad indeed. And then then I think it was a very expensive thing to do. They filmed it in Botswana. It was difficult, obviously, doing that. They had to build a little village with the the buildings and everything. They had to create a village to right. to, right. to 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 um, film it in. Right. So it was a it was a, a difficult film to do. Yeah. But I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. So I want to know what your daily writing life is like because you mm -hmm. are like. A lot of us are voracious readers. You're a voracious mm. reader. How do you? You're a voracious writer, because I think you 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 put in a lot of words every day. Is what I was reading. Yeah. But because with even with the number one ladies detective agency, you're on the 18th 
book yes. will come mm. out this fall, but in 12 years you've done 18 of and written a lot of other things in between. Yes, yes. So how do you, how do, you do that? Well, I, I write, about, uh, write about four or five books a year, and I, in order to do that, obviously you have to have you have to have a regime, mm -hmm. and you have to have, um, I suppose, a certain amount of self-discipline. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm very, uh, I suppose, fortunate I in that I write quickly. So I write uh, about a thousand words an hour when I'm writing, and so that means that if I can, if I can find three hours in the day to to write in. Uh, then I've I've done a very substantial bit of bit of work, mm -hmm. and that's the way it works. So I often get up very early in the morning. I'm often up at four in the morning, and wow. I'll write then until say half past six or seven. So even before breakfast, I will have done quite a bit of work. Wow. Um, so um, you 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 have to yeah. if you if you're going to do uh, I suppose that many books, sure. and. Um, uh, I, I do. I do get it done quite uh, quite quickly. Yeah. I don't have to sit there and think about what's going to be written. Um, I sit there and 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 it comes to me. I, I don't exactly hear a voice, but there is some sort of internal equivalent of an internal right. voice, which right. which manifests itself on the page, um, or more or less with very little intervention from yeah. me in a conscious way. Yeah. So <laughs> so we're pr pretty much discovering it when we read it as you did when you wrote it. In a way. More or less. Yeah, so uh, yeah. the, uh, it's it's it, yeah. it comes out pretty much um, fully formed. In yeah. fact, yes. I mean, uh, I've, I w will change very very little. That's, um, a, that's amazing. Mm. Yeah. Right. So you've won a, a big, of many awards you've mm. won over your career, but the National Arts Club of America Medal of Honor for Achievement in Literature just recently. Yes, that, that was yeah. very kind of them. Yeah. I've, I've wow. just received that in, well, thank you, yeah. thank you. I just received that in, in New York, yeah. and um, uh, that, that was a, a very, very great honor for me. Yeah, there's some, you, you follow many, many wonderful writers to, to mm. win that award, so that's uh, really incredible. So besides number 18 of the yes. number one ladies detective agency, anything else you're working on? Well, I've just finished, on this tour, I've finished volume 12 of the Scotland Street series, ah, okay. and that's a book that's going to be called um, uh, The Time of Love and Tartan. Uh, so I just oh, finished I that, that when I was in, in, in Austin, and um, uh, I'm working, as you as you say, on volume 18 of the um, uh, of the okay. Botswana books. I'm working on volume three of the Tobe Morris uh, series, okay. and I've started a new novel, which will be published in the UK wow. in uh, October. So um, I, I've I've got about four. Uh, I'm working on four books at the moment, that's and I've just done a couple incredible. of plays, Mara Matsui plays for the BBC. I do radio plays, two radio plays a year. Mm -hmm. on the Botswana books yeah. and so I just finished those today in Chicago oh. and sent them off to the producer back in the UK what? so I've been I've been I've been I've been busy yeah you're a busy <laughs> guy you're a busy guy okay uh, Alexander I under, end these interviews with a little quiz you oh, know all of them they're oh, all, my all goodness book me. related they have to Am do with your to be, reading life I'm going to be humiliated no no no, so no. It's, a, it's a lightning round so whatever comes to mind first okay what was your favorite book as a child I had a wonderful children's book as a very small child. Yeah. I had a wonderful children's book in my, in my possession, which was called Ginger's Adventures, all about a dog who runs away from home and then eventually gets, gets back, and all written in, in, in doggerel, it's, it's verse. And uh. I thought that was terribly good. I also <laughs> liked Rudyard Kipling's Ricky Tikki Tavi, uh, a wonderful story about a heroic mongoose who saves a lot of people yeah. from, uh, from cobras. So that, that, that's very really good. That's good. Okay, how about something in when you were in university or maybe in law school that has still stayed with you to this day? Yes, when uh, I, I read started reading Brian Moore, an Irish writer. Okay. Um, he wrote a, a wonderful book. His first book was The Lonely Passion of Judith Hearn. I read that round about that that yeah. stage. When I was at university, I also read, and it hasn't stayed with me. I read Jack Kerouac. Ah, now, okay. I think that's yeah. the right age to read Jack Kerouac. Sure. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're totally right on that one. I did. I think <laughs> if one started reading Jack Kerouac when one was, say, 40 or 50, then I think um, you, you know, you'd you're, have you're, to be but a bit concerned. Yeah, yeah. But when, yeah. You're, when you're 19, uh, Jack Kerouac is, is terrific. That's perfect. Okay, have you ever <laughs> faked reading a book? Because we've all done that. <laughs> 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 or at least that you read it. Well, some, uh, sometimes I have said, 
I've read a book when I haven't read the whole book. Okay. Uh, well, that's yeah. Good. You know, that's and almost. I think uh, I think what you should say. I've dipped into it, but okay. occasionally I've 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 read say two thirds of a book. Okay. And I've said I've I've read it, and okay. that's that's you okay. know that's not a not a complete. It, well, it's a sixty percent lie. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's a good <laughs> answer. Though. Okay. How about a book you've been an evangelist for? Anything you've read in your time life that you could not tell enough people to read it? W. H. Auden's collected shorter uh -huh. poems. Um, yeah. Every time, I, I I actually give that book to people. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm such an, uh, an enthusiast for it. Yeah. Uh, Auden was the most wonderful per, uh, poet, magnificent poet, yeah. and um, he's my my great uh, literary enthusiasm. Yeah. And that award you just won, he had won it previously. Isn't he it? did, yes, yeah, yes. So well, that's yeah. that's what really really delighted yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about if you could live in an imaginary world of a book? What? What world would that be? Oh, that is very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose, I suppose, uh, I'm a great fan of Patrick O'Brien. Oh, you know his sure. naval historical novels, yeah. mm -hmm. of which he wrote 20. I haven't read all of those. Yeah. I've been rationing myself, actually, hoping that by the time I eventually leave this world, I will have reached volume 20. Yeah. So it's a question of just yeah. working out. Yeah. But. Um, I, I would I would rather like to that would be very interesting. Although I wouldn't like to be on the lower deck, so to speak. I think I'd want to be sharing Jack Aubrey's cabin, yes, you know, the great exactly. cabin. <laughs> yeah, very good. And I, I yeah. and, and I think when the when the, the naval battles start, I'd, I'd prefer to be somewhere okay. somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> good choice. Okay, how about how about a book that you when your daughters were young that you loved to curl up and read with them together? I think that. I I I rem remember doing that with uh, uh, Roald Dahl. I think yeah, um, Roald Dahl's got that nice sort of curling up feeling yeah, as a security. Yeah. Uh, particularly, I think Danny Champion of the World was a lovely book. Yeah. Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as well. Sure. But uh, I did that with the uh, with the, with with the girls. Those are good read yeah. to do. Okay, how about um, three authors? If you could have dinner with, they can be alive or dead with you, three other authors, who would that be for a dinner party? Uh, well, certainly Auden okay. uh, would, yeah, would, be would be right. there. Um, and I think um, I would quite like, uh, I'd like R.K. Narayan, a great Indian writer mm -hmm. who's a great enthusiasm uh, uh, of mine. I'd like Narayan to be there. And um, I think, uh, well, it would have to be Jane Austen. Okay. But if Jane Austen couldn't come, if she was going to dinner <laughs> with somebody else, okay. Okay. Uh, I'd get Barbara Pym, oh. 20th century okay. Jane, uh, Jane Austen, okay. and I'd, 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 I'd invite her. Okay. I would like to yeah. be there too, but I'll just be a fly on the That would be a nice combination, yeah, wouldn't it? That would be a great combination. Aus, uh, Aus, uh, well, Barbara Pym, Narayan, and Auden. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. And what are you reading now or read recently that you've really enjoyed? I tend to have, I often have about Ten books on the I on don't the know go. How you do that. I like I you know I, I I sort of go in and in and in and out yeah. uh, of of them. Right at the moment on this tour, mm -hmm. I I don't actually have a book with me because I've been r writing so much, so I deliberately didn't bring uh, a book with me. But um, I've been reading quite a lot over the last couple of months uh, about uh, Homer. Uh, I'm I really uh, have rather enjoyed that. I've read. Uh, in fact, I've read the, that book a couple of times. Uh, Adam Nicholson's f f uh, wonderful book, *The Mighty Dead*, on on the um, uh, Homeric um, uh, uh, poems, uh -huh. and um, I've then found other books uh, about Homer that I've I've been reading. And then also I've been going through. I haven't quite got to the end of it. Uh, going through uh, the the Odyssey. Oh, I've been carrying yeah. the Odyssey around sure. with me because yeah. I think that is just so. So wonderful! There's that marvelous uh, translation by an American scholar and poet. Just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So I, I'm, I like, uh, I like that. But very, very eclectic, broad, yeah, sure. um, Catholic tastes, really. Okay, um, all right. Okay, A plus, one hundred percent. Great score on that quiz, but thank you so oh, well, much, Alexander, thank you very for much. sitting down with me. And congratulations on my Italian bulldozer. Well, thank you very much indeed. I enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. Great conversation with British author Alexander McCall Smith and his new novel is called My Italian Bulldozer. What a great title. You will absolutely love this novel. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed. <music>